we want people to serve us. That's the natural. But to take on the form of a servant means that we have a mind in us that says, hey, I'm here to serve. Right? The happiest, most joyful people are the servants. Is that right? People who serve. When, when, when I see, sometimes when I see my kids get a little cantankerous, a little, little, this, um, got them uh, mully grubs, I get them to serve. And actually, that, can, that makes things worse for a few minutes because they, you know, they're, they're wallowing in self pity. They want something to be done to them. But when you serve, you have joy. Being a servant. You want to be great in the kingdom of heaven? Be a servant. If you want to be great, be the servant of all. And then, um, now, then I want to skip down. He says, verse 12, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God that works in you both to will and to do His good pleasure. And we won't read 14 because I don't want to convict everybody in here. So, 12 and 13 is the ones that are going to be our springboard in today. To today. He says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And then, it's God that works in you, both to will and to do His good pleasure. Now, when it says to work out your salvation, that does not mean that you are saved by your works. Some people will read that verse and they'll say, okay, that's what that's meaning. I've got to work it out. You know, I know I believed on Jesus, but now I've got I to work for my salvation. Well, you're going to be the most miserable Christian in the world because you couldn't do it before and you can't do it now. When he says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, that means walk it out. Work it out. Walk it out. This salvation that you've, you've been saved and now live it out. Walk in obedience. You know... Uh, you know, a river, as a river flows, it flows free, but when you put an obstacle in its way, then there's, it's got to work around something. Well, our lives, when we, be, when we get saved, we come into this uh, great relationship with the Lord. You know, we have, it says, by faith, we have peace with God. I mean, it's wonderful. I know when I first got saved, it's just wonderful. Hey, I got this free gift of salvation. I don't have to go to hell. I don't have to be... Uh, judged based on my own works because I knew I'd never make it. I mean, who wouldn't be happy? I mean, Christians should be the happiest people on the face of the earth because this life is but a moment. So you're kind of walking in that. You know, it's like you invite the Lord into your life and everything's fine. Boy, you're happy, you're joyful. And then God wants to go through some closets in your life. Right? Right? He, he, he puts his finger on areas of your life where uh, you don't want to let go. You know, Lord, I'll let you be Lord of this half of the house. This half is mine. Right? Well, if Jesus is not the Lord of it all, he's not Lord at all, right? <laughs> and so, um, you're working it out. You, you are living out your salvation with fear and trembling. You know, the Bible speaks about Vedic. Fear the Lord and that tremble at His word. You know, that's how... What, what keeps me is my, the fear of the Lord. That's what keeps me uh, acting right many times. is the fear of the Lord. It's not just... I'd like to say it's just all, all 100% my love for God. That's why I don't do the things that my flesh wants to do. Well, a lot of it is that. You know, I, I love the Lord. I don't want to hurt Him. I don't want what Jesus died for me, I don't want to go back into that. But another thing is, the fear of the Lord. Because I think about one day, I'm going to stand before Him, the judgment seat of Christ. And I'm going to I'm have to give an account of my life. Oh my. An account of my life. Everything that's done in the body, whether it's good or whether it's bad. Sometimes I'll kid around with my sons. You know, they'll say mean things to one another. And uh, maybe this is why preachers' kids are so messed up, you know, because they always use them for examples. Um, but anyways, 
I'll tell them, I'll hear them say something ugly to one another. I say, well, you're going to hear that again. What do you mean I'm going to hear that again? Well, one day you're going to give an account of everything that you've said. You know, that's what, that's what Jesus said. In that day, your words are going to justify you or condemn you, right? Every word, every idle word that a man speaks, he's going to give an account of. What's an idle word? It's a word that doesn't produce anything, right? So to think that every word that comes out of these lips, I may, you know, may have a, a, a review process one day. That'll keep you. That keeps me from a lot, out, out of a lot of trouble. But he says... So that's you doing it, right? You're working it out. You're a Christian, and once you leave this, these doors, you can do anything you want to do. You're free. You live in America. You are free. It's you doing it. It's you working it out. It's you walking it out. It says, then it says, for it's God that works in you, both to will and to do of His good pleasure. You see, it's not all of God. It's not all of us. You have a part to play in this plan of salvation. It's not earning it. That's only by the blood of Jesus Christ. By grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourself. Not of works. Lest any man should boast. But you are walking it out on a daily basis. It's you and Jesus on a daily basis. You know, that's how you get intimate with Him. It's meditating on Him. On His Word. You know, I'm just so grateful for the Word of God in my life through the years, what it has done and how it has enriched my life. You know, we're to, we're to meditate on the Word day and night. It doesn't say to read the Word day and night. The Bible doesn't say read the Word day and night. It says to meditate on it. You know, when I'm working and I think of, you know, a lot of times the things that I share here, I get, well, I'm just working. It's not when I'm waking up at 4.30 in the morning, you know, falling asleep while I'm trying to read the Bible. That's not when it comes to me. It comes when I meditate. You know, we, we have a... a there, there's a wrong meditation, a new age type of meditation that's in, that's, that exists. But the Bible meditation means to speak to yourself. You say it to yourself. You know, if I read something in the morning, I'll speak it to myself as I, as I go on. And then the Holy Spirit illuminates it or quickens it, you see. So you have a part and God has a part to play in all of this. God works in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. God has a good pleasure that He wants to accomplish in your life. It's His will. And so what I want to do is I want to look at a few things. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 18. <clears throat> 